Alright guys, it's time to start this build. It seems like I just picked up that truck from my dad's when in reality that was done back in the spring. Maybe we should rename this channel Bleepin' Yoda. I've got it. So this is my Toyota Tundra. This is what I use for my daily and also my tow rig. Then we have this Toyota Tacoma over here. This was my mom's this toyota i picked up for the versus challenge got it at a good steal i don't know i guess we do have a jeep there's a dodge there's a sort of a jeep chevy combination that's a jeep there's josh's daily a volkswagen why do you drive that thing it's good on gas ish <laughs> there's a jeep sort of i wouldn't call this a Jeep or a Toyota, but it's more similar to a Toyota than a Jeep. We could make it Toyota. Take the <laughs> drivetrain out of that black Toyota out there and put it in this. What? <laughs> that thing has stood up to all the abuses we've thrown at it begrudgingly. But this is our next project right here. It's been sitting there since, when did we pick this up? In the spring sometime? After Moab. It's been a while, but uh, we had a, another project to get done first. We had the ultimate adventure. We had a lot of things going on, but it's now time to get this started here in the fall. Let me show you another reason that it took us so long to get this build started. Look at this. So for the past few months, we've been collecting parts. All these parts. There's a box up there. There's a bunch of stuff over there. All this stuff is going into this Toyota. Dead battery, yeah. but it works. Okay. So what's the first thing gonna be? An Optima battery? First things first, we need a new battery. Does this battery have a date code? It says 820. It's probably still, it's still a good battery. Just, it's just needs to sitting. be charged. That'll have to work for the time being. Alright guys, so one of the first things that I want to do is do a compression check on this so that if there is any engine issues, we can go ahead and get that sorted out while we're doing the rest of the build. So I've got a little compression checker here and uh, pulled the spark plug. Josh, what did you have to say about that spark plug? It's been in there a while and it's never been floored. <laughs> so tell us your recommendation on... Uh, why you need to put the pedal to the metal sometimes? It cleans it out. Just get on it. Get out on the highway and give her the beans. <laughs> keeps keeps the combustion chamber cleaned out a little bit. When you were talking to my dad, you said something about um, having to open up the throttle occasionally. Yeah. Because he's not one to do that. <laughs> about uh, 55 miles an hour is tops. But uh, you're saying that'll eliminate some of this carbon deposit issue? Yeah, it's going to help it some. It doesn't hurt your vehicle to floor it every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go over a compression check for us. I pulled the spark plug. We're going to get one of these adapters. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Put it in this hole here. Screw that down. We're going to put that then onto this gauge. 
we need to make sure that it does not start so we're going to disable that uh, I'm pretty sure we can do that just by pulling that wire there on the distributor cap there and then we're going to try and start it yep we're going to crank it over a few times and see what kind of reading we get Okay, we got a um, hundred and thirty. Yep, hundred and thirty-five or so. What are the factory specs on this? You said one seventy. So that's what a quick search said that knew would have been around one seventy. So it's. It's got some miles on it, but... 300,000 miles. <laughs> as long as they're close to each other, that's what we're looking for. Let's take a look at this one. The gap looks massive on there. It's still going up when you stop cranking, so just do a couple more seconds. Yeah, 135. Oh my goodness, look at this third one. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of carbon buildup on the outside of that thing. Oh, that was disgusting. Okay, number three. Go for it. Right between 120 and 150. We're looking for the spark gap. Josh lost his phone. Say it again. Hey Google! Tell me a joke. Did you hear about the snowman that got upset when the sun came out? He had a total meltdown. <laughs> uh, does it tell you the gap? Sometimes. This one, no. It tells us the valve clearance. Okay, well right now it's 45,000. What's your Googler tell you? It seems people are daring around 35. 35? Yeah. What'd you do, old man? Why'd you not change your spark plugs? <laughs> I would have thought that he'd have changed his spark plugs every 10,000 miles or so. <laughs> All right, cylinder number four. Let's see what we've got. That one's about 140. Good. Let's hide his phone again. 140. All right. So what does that tell us? Compression's fine. We don't we don't really have any issues. We don't have a, a real bad Morton cylinder or anything like that. So. Okay. What would be the next thing to look for if we were going to be testing the motor for any? inconsistencies. I mean we could do a leak down test but I really don't know that we need to. That's just gonna check valve seals. This thing doesn't have a smoking issue so I really don't think we have a, a leak down issue. Mainly just be tune-up stuff. I don't know that we need to test that much stuff. Okay we are definitely gonna do a tune-up and get some new spark plugs in this thing. You want to put the first new part on this truck? What's that? It's important. It's an important new part. Oh man. Wow, look at that. I set something hot and it just <laughs> melted right through that. This thing's getting better already. Factory fit. All right, now that we have that out of the way, Josh and I have been discussing how to get this build started and we're kind of at a loss. We're kind of at a loss of how to how to make this interesting for you guys because it's all about videoing this in a way that's 
entertaining, not just getting it done in the quickest way possible. But I think at some point we're going to have to get started and just tear this thing down, which is, which is I think, what's up next. But what do you say we kind of keep it mobile, but we tear everything down otherwise that needs to come off of this thing and get started that way? That works. All the suspension stuff we can probably do in a day or two, whatever. Don't give away the secrets of what we're doing. Shh. <laughs> Suspension stuff. <laughs> All right. So say goodbye to little Toyota the way it sits, and uh, let's get started tearing this apart. Just when we get started, look who pays us a visit. Oh, look at that. Show everybody your apron. <laughs> That's our kids' fingerprints, or our handprints. That's right. That looks delicious. Good. That's what we're eating. They say like 50% of the population thinks that cilantro tastes like soap. But I think it's delicious. What about you guys? Any of you guys think it tastes like soap? Josh, do you think it tastes like soap? What? Cilantro? No. Okay. I think anybody who thinks that needs their taste buds checked. <laughs> Here's a tip for you guys. Don't just make a pile of bolts because you won't remember how it goes back together. Either put the bolt back in or uh, use little plastic baggies, sandwich bags, and label them. Or if you're like me, you just let them drop all over the floor. Kick them around for a couple of weeks or months and then try to figure out where they went. Custom tip by me. On the inside of the cab here is the factory Toyota bag. I'm looking for the tool that removes the, the spare tire. And if you'll notice, my dad had installed a larger fuel cell. So this is a, actually a secondary fuel cell. So altogether, there's probably 40 or so gallons in here. What's crazy is that this fuel cell here has a hole in it so it still utilizes the factory hold down for the spare tire there all right let's look at the tools we got in here we've got a tire iron why do you think this is in here it's not supposed to be in there <laughs> that's for slashing people i think um we have a Screwdriver, we have, what are those? You think that's a crimper for electrical, like an old electrical crimper and stripper? That's what it looks like to me. It, it has a dial on here so you can, you can gauge different crimps and different strips. That's cool. Never seen anything like that before. A Phillips screwdriver and this is what I'm looking for right here is hopefully the tool to bring that tire down. Tire coming down on your head. Oh look at that. It's not even a cable it's a chain. So check that out that is cool. Not going to corrode anytime soon, but that is an aftermarket gas tank with a hole in it.
Right inside here is the perfect spot for a hornet's nest. All right, we got this thing off. We're putting the bolts back, so hopefully we know where those go in the future, 24 months from now. We should take a picture of this thing. I'll put it in Photoshop and crunch it all up, and then we'll send a photo to my dad. Say, day one. <laughs> we lightened it up quite a bit already. All right, up next, I'm gonna pull this roof rack off. My dad put this together years ago for carrying kayaks and uh, lumber. He's had all kinds of stuff up there. You breaking stuff? Uh -huh. That's like a factory little rock guard, huh? That's a good idea or a bad idea, but we've decided to take the plastics off, clean those, get the dirt out of there, and that'll help us doing the body work as well. Somebody's calling me. Hello, you're on video. Yay, hi. <laughs> All right, I'm on the driver's side here. Look at this, look what I found in here. Right in there, I found this bolt. And that bolt, to me, it looks like a door bolt. If you can see those bolts right there and there on the door, I don't see any missing. Makes me wonder if that was missing from the assembly process. Maybe somebody dropped it in there and then just grabbed another bolt. I think you broke it. Does it look broke to you? Down and up. Down and up. That's the trick, down and up. He's breaking more things. Might be true this time. What are you doing? Uh, there's some plastic clips in there that are broke to broke. See that? What year is this? 90? That's 33 years old. That's what happens when you keep things out of the sun. I think things are breaking. They are. At some point, my dad had something sticky right there, it looks like, and it affected that. It kind of pulled at it. So I think now is the time to see if we can release that. Otherwise, we'll have to figure out what to do with that. But I might as well figure it out now. While we still have time to order things if need be, do you think a heat gun will release that? I think that's our best shot to get a heat gun. It'll at least lay it back down. Well, that doesn't seem to be helping. I'm afraid to get it any hotter than that. You know what we need? We need one of those bleeping Jeep Band-Aids, and that would fix that. And if you just go right over it, Fixed. Okay, for removing, this is called a crank window. For, remo for removing these, there is a tool. <laughs> this is called a crank 
We used to have to do this. <laughs> there's a tool that looks sort of like this tool, but it's not this tool. And there's a little clip back in there. And what you would do is slide that tool in and pop the clip. And you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. But using the wrong tool, you can still get in there and pop that clip. And then these handles will pop off and that clip just sits on there like that. So you just gotta go in and push on the edge and pop that clip up. That's not the same, however, as a Cherokee. On a Cherokee, you just grab that sucker and pop it off. It's got a little plastic retainer. So I assume the rust, though, is like a Cherokee. You take the door handle off, take the screw out of there. Not really sure just yet, but typically this thing pops up and kind of slides off. You can either push this through or you can pop it off and up. Of course you'll need to come in here and pop all these little clips from the corners. And then once you get all of them, hopefully this will slide right off. There we go. Mine on this side hasn't ever been into. Yours? Has yours been into? Nope. Man. Well, that's a shame. Because we're going to have to get into it. All right. One day down. It's quitting time. We're going to get after it again tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to be doing then, but uh, we've got a whole lot of things over there, a lot of boxes to put in here. Here's a little sneak peek. Good morning, folks. Uh, Matt's still up at the house snoozling, so I'm going to kind of pick up where we left off yesterday for a little bit. There's only a few things left to take off right now. Uh, got to get the taillights off, and we got to get this body moldings off, and I'll show you a little trick I have to do those, make it quick and easy. Four bolts, screws. Like somebody's been in here doing some wiring. Okay, I'm here. Don't listen to Josh. He can't start these videos. Only me. Where's that, that little insert? Three hours later. Three hours later. <laughs> I wasn't sleeping, I was doing business things. Lots and lots of business things. So today, I think what we will do is take this out, power wash the underneath, Get it on the lift and start replacing some of the pieces that need to be replaced under there because there's a lot of loose objects underneath there. You got the tail lights out and you also wanted to take off this molding, you say? Yep. So we're going to peel this off. What do you got planned for that? The air hammer. Nice and gentle. Air hammer? Yep. That does not sound like a good idea. It's nice and gentle. So I'm not liking this idea. That's a tool made to do that. Seriously? It's, yes. It's what it's made to do, and it's a lot more general than you would think. It's paint. You're going to ruin the paint. You paint it. Yeah, but you don't want to just ruin it on purpose. No, so if it was a molding that was just stuck on the side, you could run down through lengthwise and just peel it off. This one is curved and it's inside of a notch there. So you're going to have to come up from the bottom. So we'll do a little one first. And you just be gentle with the air. That's why we've got a body guy in the shop here. I didn't remove this yesterday. Here, I'll help. I'll help you. Okay, yep, there we go. See, doesn't require an air <laughs> hammer. Just peel it off with your fingers. It'd be so much faster if you use it though. 
All right, let's do that again. Beat it to death. Almost smacked you in the face. All right, nice work. Could probably reuse those if we had to, but we're gonna try and find new ones because it's got a little bit of wear and tear on it right there. While he's doing that, I'm gonna find a place to put these. So back in the day, before Amazon, what we would do is we would go to these places. You actually had to go in and talk to somebody. <laughs> but in my instance, uh, in Arlington, Texas, it was a place called CD's Truck Accessories or something like that. And I remember going in there um, looking for things. And what you would do is they would give you a catalog. You would look through the catalog, tell them what you wanted to order. About uh, two to four weeks later, they would give you a call on this thing called the telephone. You'd go to your kitchen, you would pick it up off the wall and answer it, and they would say, your accessory has arrived. Then you would go down and pick it up, and, uh, and they, would, they would have it waiting for you. I remember doing that specifically with a pair of these. So these are car uh, tread plates, and I've got these for my Cherokee back in the day for these three inch tubes. So I thought it would be fitting to get another set of these. These are actually old new stock. So look how old that paper is. But it's a brand new step plate. And these go on here and give you traction for whenever you're getting up in there. And I thought this would be fitting for the retro appeal of this 90s truck. But what I want to do is figure out where we're going to attach that before we take this off. And it might get a color change, but um, yeah, I just want to get that mounted, situated in place before we put this up on the lift and take the Nerf bars. Do you call those Nerf bars? Nerf bars, yeah. Before we take the Nerf bars off. What did you find over here? I'm positive that at least this much of the truck has been repainted. You can see the tape lines here where they repainted. And you can see under here where they had taped off the molding before. And you can even see the paint on the edge. So he had those those fender flares on when they repainted. Old man, what did you do? Did you get into a wreck at some point and not tell anybody? Because uh, I don't remember that at all. I don't think he does either. <laughs> so you're saying that the door and the front fender has been repainted? At least the door and the front fender have been repainted. So does that mean they've been replaced or just damaged and repainted? Maybe just damaged and repainted. Who knows? It may have just gotten keyed. Did you make make somebody mad? <laughs> so something happened at some point, yeah. and the the front part of this was either damaged, wrecked, or repainted for some reason or another. Do you remember what happened there, old man? I'd really like to have two of these because when you're getting in the truck you need them up front but when you're standing on here getting something off the the roof you need them in the rear but I found these on eBay from somebody who didn't know what they had but otherwise finding these is really tough so I think for now I'm gonna put these up front and I'll keep my eye out for another pair of these on eBay
he even dated when he put this piece of plywood in there. 1-18-06. Take a look what's in here now. Still in good shape, other than some hay. What's all this uh, black stuff here? Oh, that's glue. I think he originally had the carpet just glued to the floor. And then this would have been where the seat belts. When I was a kid, there were seat belts in here and we'd just sit back in here and go on road trips. Super, super safe. But it was a lot of fun. rack but it's gonna be a lot easier to wash this thing I think with that off there so let's go ahead and pull that off we'll set it aside take it outside to wash it what do you say I like that idea <laughs> Looks like a completely different truck. Looks like one of those little mini trucks now. Look how much higher that raised the rear. That's crazy. Josh is over here trying to smooth that out with heat. Is it working? It's working. I guess, I guess I wasn't getting it hot enough. Do it and then rub it with your hand. Burn your hand. <laughs> Do it again. It's kind of the best I can get it. Still a little bit of wrinkle in it. It's a lot better. is we should probably get a shelf to store all of the things we had this left over but we could use it to store all the stuff we're taking off of the build so we'll put this together and then we'll put the uh, camper top on the shelf all right that shelf is going to fill up fast now we need to find a place for the topper, and I think I know the perfect solution. I got a bunch of these a while back at Home Depot. They have since gone up about a hundred dollars in price. Yeah, I just saw them that they're three hundred something dollars. Yeah, when they first came out, they were I think two fifty. Now they're three fifty or more. should have uh, taken that off before I pressure washed it. <laughs> we might need to go back outside. Okay, well, it's obvious we have some more pressure washing that needs to get done, so back down it comes. I it. Yay! Spray stuff on it up there, and then take it out. What's the harshest solvent we have? <laughs> Spray wars. My floor is going to be real clean after this.
Is it cleaner now? Cleaner. Cleaner. You'd have never known that was silver, huh? Mm -mm. We just need to do that about a hundred more times and we'll have it clean. All right, so we've got a couple hours left today. One of my dad's biggest complaints was the exhaust has had a leak for years. So we're gonna try to replace this. We have the pieces, we think. This is up front. That one's in the rear. Cat in the middle. And then we also have, you got all the donuts and stuff that goes with it? All right, cross our fingers. We'll try to get this finished up today. Look what I found up in here. Apparently there was an exhaust leak at some point. Can you guys see that? <laughs> I don't know who did that, but they were like really far away when they did, did that weld job. You know what you should show them is what you found up in here. Oh yeah, apparently my old man thought that this would be a good place to to store the uh, the jumper cables. Dad, do you even remember that those are in there? I wonder if he actually might have forgotten that they were in there. If you do remember, when did you put them up there? Yeah, what year? What year did those go up there? They look like they've been there a little while. All right, we got the gaskets all cleaned up there. Everything pulled. Got some new rubbers on here. However, we are missing a couple of gaskets that we need. I called AutoZone and they have those in stock. So, we need one more of those and we need a gasket for the O2 sensor right there. But, at the same time, I was thinking, you know what, it's kind of nice to be able to stand right here and not have a muffler hitting you in the head because we are going to be doing some more work under here. So, we might just set that on the shelf, our new shelf, and uh, install that later. What say you? I say yay. You say yay? I say yay. It'll allow us to get to the transmission mount better, the motor mount, the axles, the differentials, all without smacking your head. It's also quitting time for today. Just about, so. We'll table until tomorrow. We can do that, and I have a kind of a proposition about we might as well jump in head first tomorrow. A proposition? Not a proposition, but an idea. Are you propositioning I'm propositioning me? propositioning you. <laughs> Everything we're looking at, we're waiting to do for the, for the one part. <laughs> we might as well do that one part. Yeah, these builds are complicated, especially when you're videotaping them, because you end up finding something that needs to wait for something else that needs to wait for something else. But if we pull all this apart, it's just gonna be a pile of pieces here for a little while. Do you think the viewers can manage that though? Can, can you guys manage a pile of pieces? <laughs> all right, well, that's what we'll do. Do we need anything on the lift anytime soon? I hope not. We have jack stands. It's not going to be very mobile here shortly. Yeah. Good morning. Oh look, I've got uh, a golden nugget shirt on today. Are you wearing your uniform? I've got my uniform on. Okay, I did bad this morning. 
I wasn't wearing my uniform. All right, we have got to get down to business today. So, Josh had a plan. Go for it, dig in. <laughs> I really didn't want to just tear this all into pieces. I wanted to do it kind of uh, one thing at a time. But doing it that way, other things get in the way. Let's just say that. So we're just going to go all, all after it, tear it down completely. And to do that, we're going to take the ring and pinions out, take the tires off, the wheels off, the axles, all that stuff. OK, let's do it. Lift her up. <laughs> Commencing in three, two, one. Okay, well, it's very obvious we are not familiar with how to tear these, these Toyotas apart. Stop making so much ragged! Be quiet. <laughs> it's very obvious we don't know how to tear these Toyotas apart. There's a little lock washer there that seems to be like welded onto that piece. Josh over here, he's taking his apart, but we still can't get this separated from here. I bet you that's been on there since 1991. I bet it has. <laughs> Does that mean those are the original rotors? They can't be. Could be. I guess they could be with 300,000 miles. Knowing my old man, he never has to hit the brake because he never hits the gas. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? Some kind of centering. Yeah. Some kind of centering ring. Why is it that there's so much light in here? It's so dark. Yet it's so dark under here. Well, we're gonna need some more parts, I think. Josh has the technique down. Now I just gotta try it on my side here. Now what's keeping it? Uh, probably that. So a lot of people have asked me over the years how I know how to fix so many things. And my answer is usually, I don't. I just put things together in reverse of the way that I took them apart. <laughs> that seems to work pretty good. Then you just watch your own video if you forget. I've done that a few times. All right, I guess I should explain why we're taking all this apart. For one, we need to change those uh, brake rotors. They are really nasty. We've got some new ones over there. But also, we're taking the axle apart because we've got new ring and pinions going into this thing. One of the drawbacks of this truck is that it's got a little bit larger tires than factory and that means that it's really slow with this little four cylinder going uphill so we're going to try to remedy that i see what we're doing wrong for efficiency we should be using the same tools 
going back and forth from side to side once we find the correct tool. Look at that tiny little baby shock. So cute. Now we just add leaf springs and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Leaf springs coming up next. Leaf springs in a 40-40. All right, that was super simple. Not. So we're trying to get this out. That's the axle in this case. Looks like there's three more bolts and hopefully it should drop out. Pretty sure there's only three. There's three. Yeah. We're gonna find 18 more Four. after that three. Pick it up and carry it off. <laughs> All right, front is down. Now we got to get the rear off. And it looks like there is a leaky wheel seal back here. That looks fairly clean. Yeah, it's pretty clean. So we're not very familiar with the Toyota axles. We're having to learn along with you guys. But it looks like the whole backing plate has to come off with those four bolts there. But that means that the brake have to uh, get detached as well. And then there's gonna be brake fluid running everywhere. But we have to do that. We have to pull the axle shafts out before we can remove the third member here. Because the carrier sits inside that third member and the axle shafts penetrate that carrier. That's brake fluid leaking out. No, that's WD-40 specialty penetrant. Oh, Is, did you spray that already? Yeah. Did you spray WD-40 specialist inside here as well? No. That is oily. But at least it's nice and clean. Okay, bolts are out. Bolts are out. Uh, brake line's still attached. Don't pull too far. <laughs> Look at that. He didn't even bend the splines. <laughs> Yummy! All right, well, we got that done fairly quickly. And I think that's all the time we've got for you today. I appreciate you guys watching. If you would, give us a like, a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. In fact, I'm not wearing one today, but I'll send you a hat in two weeks. If you leave a comment down below, I'll pick somebody. Also, if you uh, enjoy our videos, if you'd like to see more behind the scenes content, consider subscribing. Subscribing? Is it subscribing? Signing up. Consider joining us over at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash bleepin' jeep. We've got uh, behind the scenes, we've got perks, we've got uh, videos that you'll see before anybody else. Like this video came out a whole week ago for our Patreons. Other videos right over there. We'll see you guys next time.